Hi folks, in this video we're going to talk about blending modes and how they create effects when two images overlap each other. The terminology that you use for blending modes in Photoshop are also the same terms you use when you create materials in a 3D program. In fact, the terminology is similar across a lot of software that combines images or patterns or colors. In Photoshop, whenever you have two layers on top of one another, you have the option to change the way they interact with one another. This is referred to as a blending mode. There are a variety of blending modes available to you to change the way the images on each layer interact. This can be a very powerful design tool, so it's a good idea to learn these modes. When you pull down the layer mode menu, you see this long list, and it can seem very daunting. There's so many options. However, these are grouped by similar modes, and some of these modes you're going to use a lot more than others. Let's look at this long list and break it down. It's grouped by horizontal lines. The groups as they go down the list are darken, lighten, contrast, invert or cancel, and component. The first two groups in the list are opposites of one another going down. So if you see on the list, darken is the opposite of lighten, multiply is the opposite of screen, color burn is the opposite of color dodge, etc. You can use these groups when you know you need to add a shadow or a highlight to your object. The next group, the contrast group works in both directions. These functions actually lighten and darken at the same time. Inside of these four groups are the four most common blend modes that you will need for 99% of your work. These are multiply, screen, overlay, and occasionally soft light. Let's look at an example. It's a Lego head with a water texture masked out over the top. These two layers will be useful as we adjust the top water layer to see what it is blend modes can do. The right side of the Lego head under there is similar to the left side, so the resulting effects will be due to the water layer's influence on the Lego head. Our first and most basic mode is normal. The layer will block out the layers beneath it. There is no math being applied between pixels. Here is the wave layer in the normal mode at a 50% opacity. As you can see, the pixels are masking out the lower image evenly, but we've taken down the opacity so the effect is dimmed. This effect will not vary based on the wave texture's light and dark areas. The next mode under normal mode is the dissolve mode. This blend mode acts on transparent and partially transparent pixels. It treats transparency as a pixel pattern and applies a diffusion dither pattern. This one is rarely used and it's a bit of an outlier. You could use it to add green to an image, but there are typically better ways to do this. As we go further down the modes, I'm going to get a little bit into math, but not too much. When you look at how each pixel affects the pixel below it in Photoshop, you can think of it as a mathematical relationship. The blend mode performs the math between these two pixels. However, it's important to understand that Photoshop considers white to be one and black to be zero. And the math is calculating the luminance level between these. Some blend modes do math on the total luminance and some blend modes on each channel. There are no negative numbers here. Let's look at the options in the darken group one by one. This is going to be one of the most common groups you're going to use, and that is why it's on the top. The first mode here is the darken blend mode. If the pixel is darker than the pixel below, it is kept. So darker tones of all layers are kept. This is performed for each channel, red, green, and blue separately. The second mode is the multiply blend mode. This tends to be the best mode for darkening. This multiplies the luminance of the pixel with the pixel below. This is great for creating shadows and removing whites and other light colors. This mode is often used to create watercolor blending effects where colors mix towards black. The color burn blend mode is darker than multiply with more highly saturated midtones and reduced highlights. This is one of the special blend modes where fill and opacity behave differently. The linear burn blend mode is also darker than multiply, but less saturated than color burn. This is also a mode where fill and opacity behave differently. The darker color blend mode is similar to the darken blend mode, but darkens overall luminance instead of separate RGB color channels. 
Now let's look at the options in the Lighten group, one by one. This is also common when you are lighting an image or adding highlights. The Lighten Blend Mode is the opposite of Darken Mode, where the pixel is only replaced if they are lighter than the one below. This behavior also acts on the red, green, and blue channels separately. The Screen Blend Mode is opposite of the Multiply Blend Mode, in that it multiplies the light pixels instead of the dark pixels. This is commonly used for highlights. Color Dodge Blend Mode is brighter than the Screen Blend Mode. The results are an intense contrasty color, typically with more saturated midtones and blown highlights. This is also one of those special blend modes that work separately between opacity and fill. The Linear Dodge Blend Mode is brighter than the Color Dodge Blend Mode, but less saturated and intense. This mode adds the total luminance levels of each channel. The Lighter Color Blend Mode is similar to the Lighten Blend Mode, but lightens on the composite channel instead of separate color channels. This compares each pixel and gives you the lighter of the two, and usually results in harsher transitions. The contrast group contains modes that help change colors in both directions. This can speed up our workflow because we can use one layer instead of two for light and dark. The overlay blend mode uses screen on lighter pixels and multiply on darker pixels. The gray is transparent. This mode is a great option for toning, color grading, and lighting correction. You can create a 50% gray layer in overlay mode and paint on it to affect the lighting. The Soft Light Blend Mode uses screen on lighter pixels and multiply on darker pixels, and gray is transparent. This is similar to the Overlay Blend Mode, but results in a more organic effect that is softer and somewhat transparent in its highlights and shadows. The Hard Light Blend Mode uses Linear Dodge on the lighter pixels and Linear Burn on the darker pixels. The gray is transparent. The effect is more intense than Overlay and results in harsher lights. The Vivid Light Blend Mode uses Color Dodge on lighter pixels and Color Burn on the darker pixels, and the gray is transparent. This is similar to the Hard Mix Blend Mode in Overdrive, and typically results in a more extreme effect. The Linear Light Blend Mode uses Linear Dodge on lighter pixels and Linear Burn on darker pixels, and gray is transparent. Similar to the Vivid Light Blend Mode in Overdrive, and again, typically results in a more extreme effect. The Pin Light Blend Mode uses Lighten on lighter pixels and Darken on darker pixels, and gray is transparent. If the dark pixels on the active layer are darker than the dark pixels on the underlying layer, they will be visible. This is a wild blend mode that can result in patches or splotches and completely removes all midtones. A bit unique in this group, the Hard Mix Blend Mode subtracts the luminance from the pixels below it. With this blend mode, similar colors cancel each other and the resulting color is black. Now let's look at the Invert group. The Difference Blend Mode subtracts a pixel from the pixel below, but with negative numbers inverted. With this blend mode, similar colors cancel each other out and the resulting color is black. The Exclusion Blend Mode subtracts a pixel from the pixel below and can only result in positive numbers. This mode is basically the same as Difference Blend Mode, except when similar colors cancel each other out, the resulting color is gray instead of black. The Subtract Blend Mode subtracts a pixel from the pixel below. Similar to the Difference Mode, only whites are absolute and black have no effect, so similar colors cancel each other and the resulting color is black. The Divide Blend Mode divides a pixel from the pixel below per channel. This mode typically results in extreme highlight because dividing standardized luminance numbers results in a larger number. Now the Component Group. The Hue Blend Mode keeps the hue of the active layer and only affects luminance and saturation of the underlying layers. The Saturation Blend Mode keeps the saturation of the active layer and only affects the luminosity and hue from the underlying layers. The Color Blend Mode keeps the color of the active layer and only affects the hue and saturation of the layers beneath. The Luminance Blend Mode keeps the brightness of the pixels and only affects the hue and saturation of the pixels beneath. Mentioned before, these eight special blend modes behave differently when fill is adjusted compared to opacity. This means that for these eight blend modes, 20% fill will look different than 20% opacity. 
For all the other blend modes, opacity looks the same as fill. Here's an example of the vivid light mode with 20% fill versus 20% opacity. If this all sounds like it's too much to remember, it is. However, you should at least know your three go-to blend modes, which are multiply, screen, and overlay. These are the most commonly used, along with their smaller siblings like darken, lighten, and soft light. If you know these six blend modes, you are doing well as a designer. Beyond these, designers simply find additional modes with trial and error when one of these six isn't achieving the desired goal. The default blend mode for a layer group is pass-through. Pass-through mode tells Photoshop to act as if there isn't a group. It's like temporarily taking the layers out of the group to perform the blending in the usual order. All of these blend modes are available at a brush level as well, and actually these can be as powerful if not more than using them at a layer level, because this allows you to mix and match modes. This is however destructive, and will not allow you to change the blend modes after the fact. However, each stroke here blends with the stroke beneath it, which often achieves a more realistic blending behavior. So that is a brief explanation of blending modes. Many different softwares, both 2D and 3D, use similar, if not the same, terminology to define how overlaying pixels will affect each other. Having an understanding of these modes will help you create great effects in your 2D and 3D workflow very quickly. All right, work well, stay inspired, and I'll see you next time.